Hi, my name is Jason. In this video, I'm going to talk about the design features for this custom neck that I built from an engineering perspective. Operationally, how does the neck work? How is it doing what it's supposed to do and not causing problems? You're going to find out I'm not into vintage guitars. This is not about how to make a Telecaster neck. In fact, it's not about the building process at all. These are the features that I'm going to talk about. Why this guitar has a zero fret on it. Straight string pull through the nut. Locking tuners. This thing called a volute. A scarf joint. Stainless steel frets or not. A titanium truss rod inside it. I fit its bird's eye maple and it has no stain on it. So let's go through that list. There are chapter markers, so skip ahead to any feature you're really interested in. The neck from the heel to the nut, there's really not a lot of complication there. It has a width, the curvature on the back, and it has a radius on the front. Those are all personal choice. Just pick what you want. I'm going to talk about the titanium truss rod first. The reason I chose titanium is because I like my guitar to be as light as possible. A steel truss rod was about 125 grams and this titanium truss rod is 72 grams. So 50 grams is about a tenth of a pound. If you care about a tenth of a pound on your guitar, these are the things you do to get rid of a tenth of a pound. It's also a double action truss rod, which means you can change the curvature of the neck in either direction. So I put in a double. So the other thing before we get into the details of the headstock is the fact that I did it out of bird's eye maple. If you choose a nice piece of wood, you don't have to stain it or you don't have to paint it. It looks good with just straight up finish and you don't need any special tools to put on a hand rub nice finish. So that's a design feature that could save you a lot of trouble in the building process. So now let's talk about the scarf joint. So the reason you would put a scarf joint into your neck is that it makes the guitar neck much stronger right here where they commonly break. Basically, you create a glue joint here where you've got a lot of sort of meat on the neck and the glue joint is quite strong, makes the grain of the neck bend with the neck where you need it to. And now you've got the grain of the neck running through the headstock in its strongest direction. The reason that guitar necks split a lot, it's a lot like you split the log with the grain, the axe just shoots right through it. If you turn that log on its side, you can't just cut through it with one shot. It's a lot of work. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to put the lot of work grain into this area of the neck and make sure that it's as strong as possible. There's no question that a scarf joint is a much stronger neck at this most vulnerable point. And you know, there's basically two reasons why manufacturers don't want to do a scarf joint. One is because of tradition, a traditional Gibson neck and a traditional Fender neck don't have them. There's this illusion that that's a better design, but it's not. Not everything Gibson and Fender did originally was the best thing. The other reason is that it does add another step in the manufacturing process, which may make it a little more expensive to build. You can actually save wood when you use a scarf joint because you can just take a straight block of wood, you do the scarf joint and you put the bend into the piece of wood. Whereas if you make the neck out of all one piece of wood, you need that big thick block to accommodate the tilt back on the headstock and so you end up with a lot of waste wood without a scarf joint. So if the wood was really expensive the scarf joint might save you but mostly it's just adding a lot of effort into the manufacturing process. So another strengthening issue is this volute on the back and that's just a little bump right at the top of the neck. You're just trying to put a little bit more meat on the on the neck at its most vulnerable point. It's really as simple as that. And you can design your volute any way you want. I really wanted to make sure mine was out of the way, that I wouldn't really feel it when I was playing. So I may have sacrificed a little bit of strength to have a certain feel, but still the thing that I have there definitely adds the meat behind the truss rod access cut out there, which is what creates the weakest point. Now, speaking of truss rod access, I did hum and haw a lot about whether or not I wanted to put it at the bottom or the top. Now, if you ask me, the best design possible is these little wheels that you can put at the heel of your neck. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the titanium truss rod with that feature, so I had to go on the top. Okay, so these are all the strength and weight categories. The rest of the features on this headstock are really all about tuning stability. Let's talk about the zero fret. So a zero fret is clearly not the tradition of any of the big guitar builders, but it's a pretty good design. You just put in another fret right there 
and I used a product called Zero Glide. You could do a retrofit on any guitar with a Zero Glide nut. And instead of filing down nut slots, you would just file down or level the height of the zero fret to match your profile from the rest of your neck. And then the nut itself is not very tight on the string. There's no binding at all on this piece of bone and you don't get the ting, ting, ting sounds when you're tuning and the strings were allowed to just glide over top of the fret. So I really don't see any reason not to go with a zero nut if you're building from scratch. The retrofit, you can say, well, is it worth it for the benefits? Maybe not if you've got a nut that's not causing you any problems. But if I did have a nut that was causing problems, this would be my go-to. So now I wanna talk about the straight string pull. You see all of these strings coming out of the nut are going straight up to their posts. That is also to minimize the friction as they pass over the nut. They can't bind in the sides of the nut slot if they're not being pulled in angled directions. They just glide right through. That does restrict your headstock design. But as I said earlier, I place functionality ahead of aesthetics. When you do design a straight string pull, these two posts are going to have to be quite close together. So some designs will stagger the posts vertically to try to solve that problem. Ernie Ball, for example, does four by two to solve that problem. I just have them really close together. I think it's fine. It was a tight fit on the back. And when we're talking about these tuners on the back, these are hip shot locking tuners, the lightest weight locking tuners I could find. Notably, they are not the lightest tuners I could find. Locking does make them heavier. Goto makes a super ultra light if you're interested in an even lighter tuner. I guess it does beg the question of why I'm so interested in locking tuners. It's two reasons. One, it does make string change a lot faster when you can just put them through, lock. But more importantly, again, tuning stability. If you've only got half a wrap around that post, they settle into their tuning and without wraps that are grinding against each other, it's less moving parts, more stable. I also want to talk about the break angle on this headstock. I chose 10 degrees. I'm not gonna say there was a lot of research that you can access to figure out what's the right break angle. Gibson uses a much steeper break angle, which also accounts for some of the problems with their headstocks breaking. Fender uses no break angle and a bunch of string trees. I use 10 degrees because PRS uses 10 degrees and doesn't need a string tree. So I figured they probably did the research and that's what I went with. I didn't want a string tree again because I didn't want to add any friction uh, that would cause any tuning problems. At some point someone's going to ask me about that logo. Make It Fit is basically my musical umbrella company. I'm always trying to figure out how to do custom things for the first time. I'm either making guitars or I'm making songs, trying to figure out how to do what I want to do. So Make It Fit is that concept of you have this vision of what you want to achieve and you got to make it fit. So if you want to hear me make it fit with a song, my original music is going to pop up on this screen somewhere. And so the last thing I'm going to talk about is stainless steel frets. I would have preferred to have stainless steel installed, but the reason I didn't was because I took the advice that you shouldn't try to do stainless steel early in your guitar building career. You should start with the softer metal that's a little bit easier to work with. So that's what I did. I did not find these frets very hard to work with. So I think the next time I do it, I would take the plunge. Okay, so that's it. I hope you like my neck, or if you don't, I guess I'm okay with that. It's my neck, it's not yours. I hope you like my original music. Good luck with your design and reject all the silly traditions from before. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel for original music and more guitar building and how I make original music type posts. It's all about making it fit.